Hi, everybody. Welcome to Blockbusting, the podcast where we love to hate the movies. I'm your host, Jay Light. Joining me today, my friend, Eileen Mary O'Connell. Hello. Hello. Happy to have you today. I am happy to be here and to be your friend. Aww. Aww. Eileen is a very funny improviser, sketch comic, does all sorts of stuff here in Los Angeles, and she hates a movie that is well worth hating. Thank you. Prometheus. Mm Mm-hmm. The 2012 science fiction film directed by Ridley Scott, supposed to be a prequel Mm -hmm. to the Alien franchise. Yes. Now, what's your major beef with this movie, Eileen? Okay, here's, here's the thing. It came out. I have friends who are filmmakers, and they were creaming their little pants over this movie. They're like, this movie is beautiful. It's stunning. It is everything I want in a movie. And so I went to see it, and I was like, oh, no. How did you feel watching this movie? I just creeping dread. Just I was just so angry the whole time. I just remember sitting there and being like, I could be doing so many other things with my life and my time right now at this moment, but I'm watching Prometheus. I'm watching dialogue that's terrible, and it's terrible, and everything's terrible. The end. It's it's pretty rough. Now I say this for the caveat, and this is something you might know about. You might might you might not. Listeners of this podcast know. I grew up. Super sheltered, couldn't watch a whole lot of things. Oh. So the Alien franchise as a whole is one of the movie franchises that I have never seen anything of. Okay. Besides Prometheus. Oh, no. <laughs> Prometheus was my is my entry into the Alien franchise. I'm so sorry. And what a terrible way to go That's in. That's not a good entry. That is like going through a door that the floor has been diarrhea and it's a sliding <laughs> circular door and it's pushing the diarrhea on the floor with you as you try to go through it. That's what you experience. The worst hotel lobby of uh-huh. all time. Are you a fan of the Alien franchise? I'm not a super fan. I like them fine. I think they are fine movies. They are entertaining and I enjoy them. I just... More than I enjoy them, do I hate Prometheus? <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you think it is about this movie that just does that just didn't do it for you? Is it the fact that it's just uh, just all around, aside from like a technical standpoint, just boring and bad? I think they just yeah, I mean, it is boring and bad. I think they just they tried to do too much and and failed at most of it. <laughs> Yeah, I think you're I mean, I think you're right on that. The plot for this movie, I mean, this is one of those movies that started being developed for a really long time. Mm-hmm. It's been in development hell for years. It started in the early 2000s as the fifth installment of the Alien franchise. Uh, James Cameron and Ridley Scott together developed ideas for a film, and then instead of that, they decided to make Alien versus Predator. Yes. Ridley Scott took a break for a while. Mm-hmm. He was like, I like I'm putting my eggs in that basket. And then they made this movie after several years when really Scott was like, you know what? I'm on board. I want to make a movie about the prequel to the alien franchise. And so much of it is, I remember even in the trailer, they showed the, it was Xenomorph, right? Is that, that's correct? Yes. Yes. So they, sure. sh- so they show <laughs> a Xenomorph on the spaceship and there, and it's so it's, there's a lot of, you know, it's very fraught and it's like, yeah. Oh, we're going to get into this. You don't see any of that until almost the very end of the movie. Yes, that is correct. Which is mind boggling to me. Mm-hmm. I, I don't, I don't, why do you, why, <laughs> why would you set your audience up to believe all these things that are going to happen and, and get them going as a fan? It just, I couldn't imagine doing that. Mm -mm. It seems so disingenuous. It's almost as if uh, he got so big that people don't know how to say no to him (laughs) and his ideas. Yeah, I feel like that's a problem that plagues nowadays a lot of... uh a, a lot of the movies that we keep seeing getting turned out what in these in the, franchises. What in the George Lucas are you talking about? Oh, boy. <laughs> Hot take. Hot take. Hot take. Eileen's bringing all the smoke. Mm-hmm. What have, George Lucas is barely even involved in the Star Wars franchise at this point, though. Yeah, that's He's true. He's really just like tangentially involved, but he's but his taint is permeated throughout. Mm-hmm. His stinky, stinky, <laughs> stinky prequels have, have festered throughout the series. I... 
can only like I heard a rumor somewhere that someone told a friend of of mine or a friend of a friend of mine and this and I and I wish I could remember the actual details of this better but they said that they thought that they the Phantom Menace was one of the best movies of the Star Wars franchise do they like um uh, TED Talks. <laughs> they must. <laughs> like, just like talking. <laughs> Do they, they like things that are talking just like, oh, let's go into like a, a politics situation without real fighting and... Oh, for sure. <laughs> I mean, the best thing that came out of the prequel series is the Star Wars Pod Racer video game. Oh, yes. That's absolutely. all we got that's 100%. good. Mm-hmm. Which is a great game. Mm-hmm. And uh, my awakened sexuality to Ewan McGregor's face. Those are the two good things ah, from the prequels. You like Ewan McGregor was... pre-beard or no beard? Oh, both. Ah, yeah? Mm-hmm. Is, uh, he's he, he's got the forces strong with that one mm-hmm. for Eileen. Mm-hmm. Oh boy! S- so let's talk about the actual movie of Prometheus. Yes. It got decent reviews. <sighs> it it did okay. <laughs> there's some stuff. There's some people who had some uh, some critiques about it. This Wikipedia page is so fucking long. It's oh very, my god! I, know. I, was, I was looking at it last night. I was like, I should refresh my memory, and then I fell asleep. <laughs> It's it was long. very long. It's like re- it's like I feel like I'm reading a textbook right now. Yes. So it got a 73 on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, they say this is the the critical consensus. It's a ambitious quasi prequel to Alien. It may not answer all of the big questions, but it's redeemed by its haunting visual grandeur and compelling performances. Particularly, Michael Fassbender is a fastidious android. Oh boy. I mean, he's he's fine. He's he does his best. <laughs> what happened to Michael Fassbender? I feel like I haven't seen him lately. Well, he was he reprised his role in Alien Covenant, which I would have brought to the table because that was also a bad movie. But that movie, at least I got to see Michael Fassbender kiss Michael Fassbender like that. Had its oh, does that happen? In, I've never does. seen Alien Covenant either. Yeah, it happens. There's like two two Michael Fassbender robots, and like there's like weird tension. And throughout the whole movie, I like whispered to my friend, I was like, "They need to kiss," and it was like a joke. And then it happened. I was like, "Oh my god." <laughs> 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 I saw. Uh, I mean, I think Michael. I think Michael Fassbender is a good actor. He's good. He does a good job. He's been. Um, he, he was fantastic. I love Shame. Yeah, great movie. Mm-hmm. I just saw uh, the Steve. You know, the new Stephen Queen movie, which he's not in. I don't know why I'm even bringing it up. Yeah, now. I, just, I, I liked of, it. I saw a lot of good movies that I like that Michael Fassbender isn't in. Like I was watching The Lion King the other day. He's not in he's that. Not I in like, that. but I like that movie. I saw Stars Born. He's nowhere near that. Weird. Good movie. <laughs> What happened, Michael? I'm looking at Michael Fassbender's career now, and it doesn't even seem like he's doing anything. I think he got a little bit me tooed. Oh, did he? Yeah, I think there's. I heard talk that he was like kind of an abusive partner, so Ooh. I think maybe like he's letting that probably die down before doing okay. more. I know he's looking at he's well he's okay. So I'm reading this thing uh, on his Wikipedia page. He's dating Alicia Vikander, mm. who they met on The Light Between Oceans, which not a good movie from what okay. I hear. Derek C. in France, the old, the old uh, Blue Valentine boy. They married in Spain and they live in Portugal. And that's really all we've got. Like, he's working on some film projects. Oh, he was in The Snowman. That's the last thing that he did. The Snowman? He did The Snowman. Oh. Which is a terrible movie. Great. Good for him. I never watched The Snowman, but everything I heard about it was that it was one of the worst movies of all time. Oh, well, let's talk about that. I wish. <laughs> But we got to stick to talking about Prometheus, which is just bo- the God thing is, damn it. The, here's what got to me about Prometheus. I remember watching it, and I, I think the the most redeeming quality about the movie is the visuals. It's very visually stunning. Very visually I'll stunning. Give it very that. One hundred percent. That it's great in that department. Yeah, there's a lot of really cool shots. The cinematography is great. It did. So little beyond that, though, like beyond anything visually and t- on a technical standpoint, this movie is just a fucking drag. Yes, just so it's so slow, and it makes and the the it feels kind of star in, in the sense that like there's a lot of build up of just clerical nonsense yes. and business things mm-hmm. and stuff that you wouldn't you, that shouldn't be in a sci fi movie. Yeah. That's the biggest problem with this movie, mm-hmm. in my mind. It's like, like we know what's going to happen eventually. Well, I mean, I do because I've seen Alien. You don't, so you probably don't. But I, you, I mean, pop I've culture, figured it you out can guess. By now. So, like, we know what's going to happen eventually. So, let's have a movie that's just very boring exposition. 
How yeah. about that? I mean, that's the thing. The movie, I mean, the plot of this movie is that it's basically just, well, we're going to send these people off and they're going to go uh, hang out on a plane uh, or so on, a, on a starship, excuse yes. me. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and they go to uh, the, the Wayland Corporation, and they've got all these like weird corporate bosses, and Charlie Theron is some sort of like corporate head honcho mm-hmm. who shows up on their ship. They they go to land on this planet, and they're just running around, and it feel it's kind of like everything. It's supposed to. I feel like the the Alien franchise is one of its strengths. Is it sort of reads as a horror franchise, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Like. This movie, I feel like, tried to play into that vein and just couldn't do it. Yeah. It set a lot of atmosphere and then did not follow through on any of that atmosphere. There's no break in the tension. No. Are you a horror movie person? Are you a fan of horror? Um, I'm, I wouldn't call myself like a super fan. Like, I know people like that. Like, that's their genre. It's not my genre, but I enjoy horror, if that makes sense. Okay. I enjoy, I enjoy horror as well. And I just started getting into it this, really this year in the mm-hmm. past couple of years. But this movie, it's it follows all of the big problematic things that I think are just plague a lot of middle of the road dramas, which there's there's nobody that you really care about. I don't have any reason to care about any of these people. Mm-hmm. There's no there's nothing that like compelling going on to them, and they make dumb decisions that don't feel realistic. Yeah. Let's talk about one of the most obvious things. Oh yes, please. At the very end of the movie. When the spaceship is rolling mm-hmm. and Charlie's Theron is running in a straight just, line, just one straight away, line, not wavering, nope. does not run in a right angle. No, nope. she could have avoided that completely. This doesn't make any sense. It's like that episode of Game of Thrones all over again, where if he just ran in a zigzag, maybe he wouldn't have gone in. I'm not familiar with Game of Thrones. Well, spoiler alert, uh, a child is chased by an alligator. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> does that really, does that happen in Game of Thrones? You can spoil, I don't care. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's just a scene where, like, Nira got really mad, and it was the young, the youngest Stark kid is running, in. These, there's bows and arrows happening, and he should have just gone in a zigzag. That's always the thing. People never run in zigzag, and I always, and it, it, it ends their, mm-hmm. their life. Yes. So quickly. Just run in a zigzag. Yeah, we're, I mean, I don't know why we're all taught at a very young age that if you're chased by an alligator to run into zigzag but it stuck with me well because you know what the problem is is that the alligator is so dumb that it thinks it also has to run in a zigzag it's gonna come straight at you anyway alligators go fast Ooh. but if you trick the alligator because mm-hmm. the alligators have tiny brains yeah like most animals mm-hmm. i just remember being like i'm gonna remember this information here in chicago illinois where there are <laughs> lots of alligators that are gonna chase me oh t- see this is why <laughs> this is the problems that i had being born in in the bayou oh being yeah born in new orleans you never know what kind of alligators are gonna pop up oh man and that's why you kill and eat the alligators instead Ooh. oh yeah what part of the alligator is the tastiest well i hear the tails are very nice. Mm-hmm. The part of the alligator that I had was indeterminate. The one time I've ever eaten alligator, it was an alligator burger. Oh. So the it was mixed with pork so that it, it would hold. The the meat itself doesn't have a lot of- It's not like as groundable. Right. Just it's It's got to take a little bit. You know, it doesn't cook the same way as beef or pork does, so it had to be mixed. So it's more like, it was kind of like a sausage patty. Okay. It was very tasty. Interesting. I like that alligator burger. I learned something today. So let's talk more about some of this other, some of these other plot points and how it just, it's just, there's so much potential for delayed gratification mm-hmm. in, in Prometheus, and yet you don't get any of the actual gratification. There's just nothing there. No, there's nothing. Is that something that you feel like the like the other movies in the Alien franchise, and again, I'm referring to you here. You're, oh my goodness. You're more of an expert than me. I barely. <laughs> but the st- but the action kind of gets going yeah. a lot quicker because they understand pacing. They understand working in that horror movie realm. Yeah. This movie just doesn't do any of that. No, it it feels longer than it is, and it's already a long movie. Mm-hmm. And again, the dialogue just like it's not like I'm a writer. You're a funny writer. You you gotta have good dialogue. If it's if there's aliens attacking you, you want the hat. Right. They don't have it. They do not have it. Let's look at some of this dialogue. Please, I got some memorable quotes here. Oh, good. Can we do reenactments? Let's do some reenactments. <laughs> so, 
here's the thing about the dialogue in this movie. There's some of it that comes from a an android played by Michael Fassbender. Yes, beautiful face of a man. Beautiful face Continue. of a man. And the thing is... <laughs> Sorry that he's been me too I wish that he hadn't been. It happens. I am upset. But the only thing that makes the most sense dialogue-wise is for his dialogue to be kind of computery and stilted yeah. and, over, and, over, and overblown. Wooden right? and robotic. But... That's the way that all, all of the them. other yes. dialogue is too. Yes. Like I'm looking at, this is, um, uh, we got some quotes uh, between Meredith Vickers, played by Charlize Theron, mm-hmm. and Charlie Holloway, played by Logan Marshall Green. Mm-mm-mm. This is actual, just, this is, this is somehow a memorable quote that six out of six people found interesting. Oh, I just, I just found it. On the IMDb page. <laughs> yeah, Do you want to be, you want to be Vickers and I'll be Holloway? I will. All right. <laughs> I am Charlize Theron. That's how she uh, warms up for her roles. Oh, yes. I am Charlize it. Theron. <laughs> <laughs> I played Eileen, a serial killer. I received an Oscar. <laughs> I was so brave because they made me ugly. <laughs> All right. Waylon found you impressive enough to fund this mission, but I'm fairly certain your engineers are nothing but scribblings of savages living in dirty little caves. But let's say I'm wrong and you do find these beings down there. You won't engage them. You won't talk to them. You will do nothing but report back to me. Um, Miss Vickers, is there an agenda that you're not telling us about? My company paid a trillion dollars to find this place and to bring you here. Had you raised the monies yourself, Mr. Holloway, we'd happily be pers- pursuing your agenda. But you didn't. And that makes you an employee. I'm Charlize Theron. And I am Logan Marshall Green. <laughs> There's nothing in this movie that feels... Real, it just everything feels so propped up and wooden. Yes. Let's look at let's look at another let's look at another chunk oh, here. Oh, please. We're going to uh, let's go let's go let's see what what's what what tracks is like pithy dialogue in this movie. <laughs> the real sparring partners here. A little further down is between Meredith Vickers and David. Oh, wait, 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 let me, how far down? This is, uh, two out of two people found them interesting. Oh, who are these people? I don't know, but it's, it's right after the, the tr- interviewer from the trailer. Oh my God. Okay, I have to, I lost my spot. What is it about robot? This is, and this is just the quote right beforehand. What is it about robots that make them so robotic? At Wayland Industries, it has long been our goal to create artificial intelligence that is almost indistinguishable from mankind <laughs> itself. You know why that's indistinguishable from mankind itself? Because all of the human beings in this movie are are fucking boring. They're all robots. They're that, they all just robots. don't know it yet. That would be a way more interesting movie than what happened yes. in actual Prometheus. Just like, in the end, like, we're all robots. I have there Has there been a movie where everybody turns out to be robots? I know that there's a couple. Like, I, I know a big plot point in Alien is somebody mm-hmm. being discovered as an android. And I can't think of anything else where that is the mo- that's, like, one of the most important plot points. I know that's not anything to do with iRobot, which I've seen in passing mm-hmm. on TNT, I'm sure. It feels like TNT's the right channel for that movie yes. to be up on. <laughs> but even the this is so this is a this is a little snippet between Meredith Vickers and David, mm-hmm. who as a robot should be very smart and tuned in. Yes. But let's find out how tuned in how tuned in and smart he is. Mm-hmm. I'm Michael Fassbender. I, I am Michael Fassbender. I'm Charlize Theron. <laughs> I was in that movie written by the person that also wrote uh, Judo. I am Michael Fassbender. I was in a movie by a British man and also by another British man. Shall we begin? How long? Two years, four months, 18 days, 36 hours, 15 minutes. Any casualties? Casualties, ma'am? Has anyone died? No, ma'am. Everyone is fine. Well, then wake them up. Two out of two people found this dialogue interesting. How are you a robot that doesn't know what casualties are? (laughs) You have infinite knowledge Mm -hmm. in your database. You're probably connected to the internet. If you're not connected to the internet and you're 2036 as a robot, you're fucking up. Yeah. You gotta upgrade your software, bud. Mm -hmm. Dictionary.com. Look it up. (laughs) This is... We've got other lines here. Like, look, I'm a geologist. I like rocks. Oh, my God. I love. I'm 
rocks. So mad. Uh, we have, let's see if we can find another snippet of dialogue here. What is the least interesting dialogue that we have on this page? Oh man, hmm. we're going we're going to the to the very very bottom here between oh, yeah. chance and ravel. The absolute bottom, or is it? Oh, I think I found it. Okay, 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 okay. Here we go. It's right above. Uh, sorry, yeah. This we're, we're by the way. This quote, by the way, on the IMDb page is right above. The f- only, I think, attempt at comedy in this movie where they go, is it tobacco in your respirator? And he takes a hit, and it's it's weed. He's vaping. He's doing a little <laughs> space vape action. Um, how about you be Chance, and I will be Ravel? I would love to be Chance. And just an idea for if you wanna, if you forget who Chance and Ravel are. Uh, Chance, this is Emin Elliott and Benedict Wong. Okay. I'm going to be reading Chance as if I am uh, Chance the dog from Homeward Bound, The Incredible Journey, voiced by Michael J. Fox. And I'm going to be voicing uh, Ravel as, you know what? Let's just go with Michael Fassbender because nobody in this movie sounds human at all. (laughs) I am Michael Fassbender. Michael Fassbender. (laughs) Well, come on. Pay up. Pay what? What do you mean, pay what? Something is manufacturing breathable air down there. That, mate, is terraforming. No, no. (laughs) Turns out he was Australian midway through that. I don't know if we figured that one out. (laughs) The bet was why we came here. If you said that dead old man wanted to talk to Martians, then I'd pay. Oh, come on. A hundred credits. Put it towards a lap dance with Miss Vickers. And scene. (laughs) And scene. Oh, great. One out of one found this interesting. Oh, boy. What other things about this movie? That's, this, that's the thing. This movie just doesn't, it doesn't, there's nothing, there's just nothing about this movie that I can understand why people liked it. It's slow. Mm-hmm. It's one of those movies that it feels like people tried to like because it's supposed to be this heady sci-fi movie. Yeah. People think that, some, I think people think heady means smart and I should like it, but sometimes heady just means Real, 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 real dumb. <laughs> real, 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 real dumb. And you know, one of the things that sort of clinches that for me is the themes section on the Prometheus Wikipedia oh, page. Oh, please, uh, two share. goes, hold on, one, two, three, four, five paragraphs long, inclu- incorporating things like the titan of Greek mythology who defies the gods and gifts humanity with fire for which he is subjected to eternal punishment. The film deals with humanity's relationships with the gods and the consequence to defying them. An explicit connection. This is what really Scott, he said an explicit connection to the Prometheus myth and to the Jesus Christ myth in the story felt would be a little too on the nose. I would have appreciated something that was on the nose in this movie. (laughs) <laughs> on the nose would be great. Yes. It feels like you weren't even aiming for the face. Mm-mm. This movie, I, it just baffles me. It's so, here's another theme. Another theme is the question of, oh. who am I? Who made me? Why hast thou forsaken me? <laughs> Development of the in-universe mythology explored the Judeo-Christian creation of man. But Scott was interested in Greco-Roman and Aztec creation myths about gods who create man in their own image. <laughs> In image, by sacrificing a piece of themselves, the creation is shown in the film's opening when an engineer sacrifices itself after consuming the dark liquid. <sighs> this, Besides drawing several influences from Paradise Lost, the Atlantic's Govindi Murti noted further influences, or the, the striking images re- reference everything from 2001 to the, the Vitruvian Man and Mario Baba's Planet of the Vampires. You can't. I don't. I, I'm, you know the problem with making a sci fi movie that it ties into things like Paradise Lost? Paradise Lost is also fucking boring. <laughs> I did. I had to read Paradise Lost in high school. Did you have to read it? I did not have to read it. It's, it's not. It's not exciting. <laughs> It's it's old time poetry. It's like poetry from the Middle Ages yeah. or, or even around that time. And it's just. You, you know how things seem groundbreaking for their time? Yes. And then you read them, or you see them, or you listen to them, and then all of a sudden you're like, well, I guess I see where they where they were coming from then, but this just is not... Doesn't, it doesn't work now. Doesn't do it for me now. No. That's what 
Paradise Lost is, mm-hmm. and that's your ma- that's his major influence for this movie is a piece of text from the Middle Ages mm-hmm. that no longer works now. Mm-mm. The movie doesn't work either, buddy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ridley, come that's, on. That's like a, a trying to be like a Renaissance painter and be like, well, I got influenced by all these like shitty cave drawings, right? <laughs> Do you want to see cave drawings done in, pe- in Renaissance style? No, I don't. No. <laughs> Why would you? Let's talk about the last chunk, which is the writing of this movie. So yes, this please. movie has a written by credit from two individuals, mm-hmm. John Spates or Spites and Damon Lindelof mm-hmm. from Lost. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So this movie initially was written by our boy John. As a screenwriter, this is according to his Wikipedia page, Spites became known as in the film industry as a go-to guy for space thrillers when his science fiction romance Passengers was included on the 2007 blacklist oh. of unproduced high value screenplays. Oh, boy. You remember Passengers, the one that's about Chris Pratt committing vague space rape yeah. to Jennifer Lawrence? Mm-hmm. No consent there. Oh, boy. So exciting. Great job. <laughs> uh-huh. Very cool. Keanu Reeves had hired Spates to to write another movie. And then uh, Ridley Scott was commissioned to write the next two installments in the Aliens saga. Damon Lindelof did some uh, revisions, and they both were like, yeah, yeah, totally, this is great. We have done a wonderful job here. You know, we we this is extremely detailed and and everybody likes this and it's got something deeply entrenched in like the human story. This is this is uh, a direct quote. All the mysteries have alien players. This is from Spates. The exoskeleton nightmare and the elephantine titan that was called the space jockey. How do you make anyone care about events between creatures like this? <sighs> it's not like this. It's not like this, John. This ain't it, Chief. This ain't it. I'm so mad. <laughs> Let me ask you this. What do you think could have been done to make this movie better? Is there anything in your mind that could have been done to make this movie better? Oh, great question. Um, <laughs> so glad you asked. Again, just like somebody like somebody who has like the balls to tell like these these Ridley Scott's like, hey, maybe maybe try something else like. I think that you get too big and then people say like people are afraid to say no because like, oh, but he succeeded so much. So you must be right. It's it's yeah, I think that's probably a big part of it. We encourage these people. It, maybe it's maybe it's not even us encouraging them mm-hmm. as consumers. Maybe it's the fact that they are all sort of in their like ivory towers of creativity at this point, And it's very difficult to tell them. Hey, maybe people don't want to see this anymore. Yeah. Did you consider that, guys? Uh-huh. I just saw uh the new Fantastic Beasts movie, and this is also this is happening to JK Rowling, who I love and adore. Mm-hmm. I love Harry Potter so much, but people aren't like editing her stuff the way that they did when she was a struggling writer writing Harry Potter. And so she's writing things like Crimes of Grindelwald. And people aren't telling her, hey, maybe reconsider this plot point that kind of contradicts stuff that you wrote about. 20 years ago and it's not happening. Well, like, well, 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 give me a little bit more insight on that. What do you mean? I don't care about spoilers. This okay. show is spoiler, go spoil away. So um, in Crimes of Grindelwald, um, we see a young Dumbledore and from the seventh Harry Potter book and the movies, we know that there are three Dumbledore siblings, him, his brother Aberforth and his little sister Ariana who dies tragically when she's young and it's like a big influence to Dumbledore's life. Mm-hmm. And in Crimes of Grindelwald, they just decide to, like, give a f- surprise fourth Dumbledore sibling. They just have one? Yeah, they just have one, and it's like, this never came up in, like, what we learned about Dumbledore's story, and, like, his expense, like, somebody in the books writes a biography about him. They just really go into his background, and, like, Dumbledore talks about it when Harry meets him at King's Cross Station when he's dead. Like, he talks to Dumbledore's ghost, and he mentions that. Doesn't mention a fourth brother. They just added a fourth brother. That is so. Why would you do that? Because it, it's not only doing a disservice to you as a creative person to do that, and yeah. it's and it's sort of it undermines your own artistic integrity to make work like that. But it also does a disservice to your fans, yes, who know what you are capable of and have stuck with you, yes. 
All the little Eileen's. <laughs> Yeah, I, you know why I haven't seen the Fantastic Beast movies at all? Mm-hmm. Because I don't think there's any reason for me to see them. Yeah. I have tapped out of the Harry Potter franchise. As a huge Harry Potter fan, I would get into contests where I would read Harry Potter books with my, with my friends and family <gasps> and see how fast we could read them. I love that. We would do things like that constantly, and I just... Like I don't want to. I don't want to. I, I didn't want to see the original Fantastic Beasts. Mm-hmm. I don't want to see Crimes of Grindelwald. I got no desire for it. I want to see a movie that from the Harry Potter universe that makes me feel excited about it again. Yeah. And what I thought I was gonna get when I saw Prometheus was a movie that would make me excited about a franchise. Mm-hmm. Now I hadn't seen that franchise, but it came so highly regarded. Mm-hmm. That I was like, okay, yeah, they can't, they can't fuck this up. They can't, but they did. They did because nobody told them no. Somebody's gonna tell you no. I okay. Let's make a pact. Okay. If one of us <laughs> ever gets to a point where we do something that compromises our own artistic integrity, yes. on a grand scale, mm-hmm. just, just let's just not let's just call each other out on it. Mm-hmm. I think this is a message. Not just for you and me, Eileen, but for other people. All the creatives out there. All the creatives out there. I know you're listening to this. Yeah, all of them. All of every all. single creative, <laughs> which based on my podcast numbers, ab- absolutely everybody's listening to this. Wow. Every creative Everybody? person in the world. Oh my gosh. Billions upon billions of people are not hearing this podcast <laughs> because they're not creatives. I got the true creatives listening to this oh, thing. Oh man. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Call yourselves out. Call your friends out. Mm-hmm. Don't fall prey to what the bullshit of Ridley Scott is doing. Or if you do, at least admit it. Admit they're like, yeah, I half-assed this for the money. I would respect that a little bit. That's, you know what? <laughs> You're right. That's fine, too. I can accept somebody needing to make a play for money. Yeah. It's okay. But admit it. Don't be like, look how cool and artistic I am and creative and ambitious. No. <laughs> yeah, don't talk about how your movie is trying to be this wonderful, heady piece of work just to cover up for the fact that it's boring for two hours. Mm-hmm. That's We can see right through that. Because you can't outrun the giant rolling no, spaceship. No, there's no way to outrun it. There's um, no way to outrun a thing that's coming at you in a straight line. Absolutely not. It's that's, impossible. That's what's smart. That's why, this, that's why this movie is too smart for its own good. Mm-hmm. Because... Once you're too, once you're that smart, you can't literally run away from a spaceship that is falling upon you. You can't, and you think you can avoid it like Buster Keaton avoids <laughs> mo- movie sets falling on him. God, Eileen, is there a movie that you would recommend people watch instead of Prometheus? Like any movie in the world? Yeah, what's one of your favorites? Guys, it's Christmas time. Go watch It's a Wonderful Life. It's the perfect movie. <laughs> oh, yes. It's a Wonderful Life is the perfect movie. It's not just my favorite Christmas movie. It's my favorite movie. It's a, that's a it's, great choice. I'm going to an outdoor screening of it in Pasadena on the 16th, and I'm very excited. Ooh. Mm-hmm. That is wonderful. I've always wanted to see it on a big screen. It is one of, it's one of my family's Christmas traditions. We always mm-hmm. watch It's a Wonderful Life. Great choice. It's so good. I am very glad that we were able to bond over this horrible, horrible experience. I feel so much closer to you now that we've <laughs> talked about something that I hate so much. Thank you for being the Charlize Theron to my Michael Fassbender. Oh my God. Thanks for coming I'm on I'm going to get that uh, inscribed on a little bracelet. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, where can the listeners find you on the internet? Oh my gosh, guys, on the internet, you can find me on Twitter. I'm at I underscore lean. I tweet a lot about Space Jam and I apologize. Hey, you get it. you're going to be in Space Jam too. <laughs> oh yeah, guys, uh, tweet hashtag get Eileen in Space Jam too because I'm trying really hard to get into Space Jam too and it will happen. I believe in it. I think we can make it happen. Thank you. I'm also on Instagram at Eileen Mary O'Connell because I underscore lean was taken by a person who does not use it. Happens to me. That's why I have my Twitter and Instagram handles at Diet J. Ooh. And follow me there because you can't follow me at J Light or J underscore Light. That's not me, guys. Mm-mm. Guess what? There are too many people who uh, decided to have a rap career for a couple months and <laughs> took all the account names that made sense. So I got to go with a joke name, but Mm-mm. it works. It's fine. It's a, good, it's a good, I like it. It's a good one. I, I can I can roll with it and I'm going to keep rolling with it. Good, I don't have a choice. You're, you're committed to it now. Yeah. You can also, if you enjoy this comedy podcast please go leave a rating or a review on itunes 
it helps me out. It helps other shows out. And uh, Eileen, you also have a podcast that uh, I do two podcasts, two of them. Yeah, I have a podcast called A uh, Skaterial A Muppet Babies Investigation, Ooh. where we uh, watch every episode of Muppet Babies in order, and we try to find clues as to what leads to Skeeter's disappearance because you never see that character as an adult Muppet. <laughs> and I'm also a co-host of Knowing Season 3, or also known as Knowing is at the Podcast, where we watch 80s cartoons, and we just have a good time and make fun of them. Oh, that sounds great. Mm-hmm. Look at that. That sounds kind of familiar. Yeah. Huh. Uh, and if you want to see some stand-up, I will be on the road the uh, December days. I'm going to be in New Orleans at the Jeff D. Comedy Cabaret uh, at Oz at 10 o'clock and uh, that is on Thursday the 6th on Friday the 7th I will be doing comedy fuck yeah at the Dragon's Den in New Orleans that is at 8.30pm and then I'll also be in Dallas doing a showcase at the Noble Ray Brewing Company that is going to be at 7.30 p.m. on Friday the 21st and uh, my full calendar is available on the website jlightcomedy.com and gosh gosh darn it I mean heavens (laughs) What a movie, and mm-hmm. what a wonderful guest. Thanks for coming on today. Thank you so much. Guys, this has been Blockbusting. Go see something good for a change. Okay.